No, I'm sorry, look, it, it, listen, I brought you outside just to tell you that they want you to clean your act up, okay? Yeah. They don't like, it's just, it's total exploitation of the female form, all right? But my friends love No, it. no, I'm sorry, it's, it's not, no, no, no. Just watch the programme tonight and try and find a way of making it, be be and making it better. That's, oh my, good man, goodness uh, sake, let me help you. Oh, oh, dear. <laughs> Are you all right? I feel a lot better now, thank you, sir. Well, don't swallow it again. I'll try. Goodness not to. sake, roll titles! Such a nice night. I thought I'd uh, I'd begin the program tonight here with uh, the introduction of the band. These are the Brenders. Thought you could rule my world, but now I find to my dismay, it really doesn't work that way. Cause you're just a little. nerves going on here take a break have a relaxed drink smile that's much better uh, right let's go over here welcome to the program tonight nice to know you could drop in we've got some very lunatic people around here there's a woman who's going around cleaning everything uh, and wait till she gets her hands on Baz then we have got here we are the front bench spokesman for the Liberal Democratic Party in the House of Lords his uh, his, his his graciousness Lord Dominic Addington Let's hear it. Give it up for Lord Addington. He's their, he's their spokesman. My Lord is their spokesman on sport and uh, disability. Where's the other disability and sport. Yes, Dominic. OK, put your, your, your gum shield back in. Yes, sir. Uh, he's also a rugby player. That's why he's built like this. And he's going to be showing Cookie 
and Jerry some good moves throughout the programme tonight. Do you want to show us just a little something? What do you want to show us? First? Well, I'll take my gum shield out now. Yes. I've seen it. It's nice and green. You okay. Fire. Oh. <laughs> when you go into rugby and uh, you want to hit somebody, and we're using yes. this globe for a ball because we forgot to get the ball. Okay. Yeah, okay. and right. it's okay. also the World Cup coming up, so you're yes. all going to watch it on okay. TV. Okay. Nice and symbolic. Yeah. You're driving into somebody, what you want to do is keep the ball safe. So if I'm going to right. hit this man, I'll hit yes. him and drive him back. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. See? You, so yes. I've got the ball yes. safe. Hang on, Liberal Democratic Lord, Tory MP. What a yes. great yes. shot. Yes. We'll get another one. Oh. Hold, hold it, hold it there for a while and we'll come back and talk later. Okay. Yes, right, competition. Last week, we, uh, week before last, we had a winner whose name was, I'll find it in a few moments, it's warm in here again, Darren Smith from Northwood in Middlesex. There you are, Darren, up on the screen. Well done. You're off to... Uh, uh, a sunshine holiday of your choice and the Canaries or the Mediterranean this week this week Where's the camera? It's a long way away. Could you come come close? Over, over, over there, right? Okay uh, What is the correct abbreviation for the Central Intelligence Agency? This is the question. What is the correct abbreviation? Do you like my light by the way? It's rather nice, isn't it? It's sort of very it's, it's moody. It is moody. Uh, is it the CIA the KGB or MI5? I know that wasn't as funny as we normally have. In fact, I, I hope you uh, know. So what is it? Give us a call, 0891 48 49 50. The lines are open till midnight on Sunday. You could be a winner! Okay, you're going to enjoy this at home as well. I don't know if you like uh, Rambo and that sort of thing. Very macho, manly sort of stuff here tonight. That'll uh, uh, liven the audience up no end. Uh, I'm going to bring on a guy now who, if I read his book and if I believe everything he says in his book, obviously he was uh, the person that Rambo um, based himself on. He is a man who says he has killed over 600 people with his own bare hands. Please, would you welcome Mr. Richard Marchenko? <laughs> Richard, or, or should I say, sir, please, would you, would you like to say Is that sir, S-I-R, yes. or C-U-R? -R? No, no, it's well, S-I-R, okay. and I'll bow. Thank you very much indeed. Well, nice to have you, you with us. Shall I sit down now? Please, no, please, your please. Show, thank your you. Show. Thank you very much. Richard, the, uh, first of all, I can't believe half the things that went on in this book. I mean, did you, do the, uh, did you make these up, or...? Unfortunately, I had to live them. It was, it was fun, though. It was fun? Yes. Well, OK, you reckon that you killed over 600 people in this book? Well, the bullets in the far end did, I didn't. Okay, but, but some people you, you kill close up as well. Yes, that's true. You, the first person... I, I, okay, it's a bit gory, I'm sorry, but I've got to ask, I'm a schoolboy at heart. When you, first, when you first kill somebody close up, what was it like? What did you feel? Uh, thankful that you're still alive. You must have had more feelings than that. No, actually, it's a, it's a matter of being a, a good survivor, and you just kill to do that. And it's, a, it's one of those kiss, keep it simple, stupid. <clears throat> it's nice to have a job <clears throat> that you have instant gratification. <clears throat> Excuse me. So kisses, kisses your your kiss, motto. Yeah, it's, it's a kiss of death. It's yeah. a, keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Right. It, it means that I had to save my cheeks, and when I did that, yeah. I had to kill somebody. And when he was dead, I knew that I'd saved my cheeks, and I'd done my job. This was most of the time. This was in Vietnam. Most of the time was in Vietnam. Yes. Okay. A lot of people came back from Vietnam feeling that they'd been bitterly let down by their country. Uh, they were looked down upon by the people of America. It was a very bad thing. Everybody knows the stories. And there are people now living who can't get back. They're, they're living very, very strange <laughs> lives. They just could not get back in, into a normal way of living, which is no surprise. When That's true. How did you manage to sort of... You, you seem... I've talked to you before tonight because I was interested. I, I, I mean, you seem fairly well adjusted, even for somebody who's so much... For an hair. abnormal, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know how you lost your hair. We don't discuss it here, but that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Actually... Uh, Vietnam was a junior officers war and a small unit tactics war and in the United States we learned out of training manuals how to fight that kind of war and by going to Vietnam was the first time that we learned from the experts <clears throat> the guerrillas have been fighting for over 20 years so I mean we uh, in your language we, we went in there dressed with a full kit and uh, and every day we took off more kit because yeah, it's okay, Richard, I'm getting you some water yeah but it's not Bombay gin is no it? no it's okay you're all right don't tell anybody what is actually in here oh thank sorry you. go on and uh, <clears throat> at any rate, the uh, <clears throat> there we are. Yeah, get oh, that, good. get that down your neck, and you'll be okay, boy. Oh right. God, yeah, terrible. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. No wonder <laughs> you're losing your hair. 
they he was his hair from this stuff. I could tell. They did say. Well, I mean, some of the, the, the some of the British people who went over there and fought in Vietnam, which wasn't widely known, I know, but they did say that. Uh, most of them as, as, uh, as members of the American forces, I think, went over there. But I talked to one guy, he said he couldn't believe the way the Americans went into battle in the first place. Chewing gum, wearing aftershave, and these guys just smelt them. Yeah, it was a... Uh, we've never been very good at uh, thinking like the enemy. And I would say that we probably... It, well, Mr. McNamara just came out with a book himself that says that he was wrong. Uh, so I don't know how the vets that had trouble adjusting are going to adjust reading that book, saying, God, why am I so screwed up? Mm. Uh, it was very good for me, but but you raised a very good point. Uh, I didn't mind washing in the river, but I didn't use any soap because you could smell it. Uh, I didn't shave very often because uh, the aftershave, you could smell it. Uh, actually, in the woods, uh, you can smell what you eat in, in terms of diet. If you have garlic, mm. <coughs> it shows up somewhere. So uh, the Vietnamese have a, a very pungent sauce that I'm sure you've had in Vietnamese restaurants, a <coughs> nook mum. And uh, so we would eat. Nook Mom and, and wash our rags, our cleaning rags with Nook Mom so that we smell like Vietnamese. Mm. But that's learning how to be a gorilla. Well, they're good for, I mean, they're a lot smaller than you. I mean, you are a big man. I mean, were you well, that big when you were in Nam or not? Well, I mean, you, you, you lose a little bit of ass out there, so it, uh, it did shrink down a bit. We sent Cookie out there. Oh, sorry, anyway, yes, go on. <laughs> then we know what we're fighting for. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Cookie. The uh, another key was uh, I, I was still quite large compared to a normal target. In fact, in training going to Vietnam, we had to reduce the size of the targets, because we otherwise we, you know, we, we'd be going over their heads. So it was, it was learning how to shoot low. You were a commander with the uh, SEAL, the, the Sea Air Land Unit, of the, the sort of the equivalent of the SAS in this country. Or Sleep, Eat and Live It Up, whichever. Yes, but you're right. And then you were a member of the underwater demolition team. What did you do then? Actually, first, it was underwater demolition teams came first. Yeah. That was the frogmen. That's the World War II that, that prepared the landings for the Marines. And John F. Kennedy wanted unconventional warfare. Uh, in each service, and he, he made the SEALs, which stand for Sea Air Land. And then you, you carried on when you <laughs> came back to this country, your sort of undercover work and stuff like that. Um, uh, did you kill people over in America? Have you killed people? Have you uh, protection and stuff like that? Or not? Have you... uh, I have to plead the fifth on that one. Really? Um, I don't know that I've killed anybody, but, I've, but I've not, I don't have any scars, not bad scars anyway. A lot of people going on holiday in the near future. I don't want to worry anybody, but I'm interested. I'm going to ask you this question because I read, you know, in the book it, it, it jumped out at me. How easy? You now have your own security firm, of course. Yes. Written, being, how easy would it be for you to get a bomb on, on an airplane if you wanted to? Well, uh, quite easy, actually. Uh, primarily because we we buy a million dollar machine, but we pay everybody that man's the machine minimum wages, and we run 700 page people through in you know, seven minutes. So uh, if you know how to mask it, you can get it through through the, the quarters there, no problem. Is there any way we can make life more secure now, or do we just have to face the fact that terrorist warfare is a warfare that is here for uh, for all time? Well, uh, we can do it, but we don't want to pay that. I mean, Al, Al, for example, you lay out all your kit, and they go through everything before you board the plane, <coughs> which means you go to the airport two hours earlier. All airlines should be more vigilant? Well, uh, it's not going to work, so uh, that's one way to do it. it the problem we have is a the airport has security and each airline has security and what you get across is what you get across. And the, I would say that one today with the Muslim religion being the, the religion of the future and, and the, the poor man's religion versus the Crusades centuries ago, uh, we're going to see a lot of things happening. We, we had it in the States with World Trade Center. I mean, you actually planted bombs next to the president's plane just to show yes. how easy it can yes. be done. Now, the president's plane, presumably in America, is well guarded, well looked after. How easy was it to get there? Uh, very easy in, in that uh, one body of special services and forces watches the plane and one defense line and one, and they all think somebody else is doing it. <coughs> and <I've, coughs> excuse me. Unfortunately, people think it happens between two and four in the morning. Uh, actually, it's the easiest in broad daylight while everybody else thinks somebody else is watching. So you you get your demolitions, your charges, your devices close to the target in in a, in a calm of night, but in broad daylight you actually put it in work. Richard, it's uh, fascinating talking to you about this. I mean, the, the, I, I couldn't believe that this was real life. I thought it was fiction, but you say it's real life. Um, are, you, are you happy? Are you relaxed about uh, life because of what you know or not? Well, I, I, there are more books and, and there's more work uh, for me to do, so I, I am uh, challenged. I am uh, at peace with myself that I am trying to do things. Uh, and I, am, uh, I probably spend more time now training our police on special weapons and tactics courses uh, in the States because crime is so heavy. And yet uh, 
the SEALs that I trained way back when uh, to do these kind of jobs are now uh, doing police action in Haiti and mm -hmm. Somalia and you know those kind of places. Have you ever been frightened or not? Uh, I'm when sure I've been confronted with a with well. A I've, been, I've been frightened, but you don't. You are not frightened until you come back, have your first cold beer, and say, "I could have lost it." Because when you are accosted and faced with it, what, what has, is happening, you're very busy, just like you're running the show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's after the show you say, "I should have asked this," or "I should have done that." Not while you're doing it. You're too busy. You're involved. Dick, thanks very much indeed. The book is called Red Cell, and uh, it's an amazing read. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dick Marchenko. Yeah. There we are. Uh, I've forgotten where we're going to after all that. Now, with the competition again, just before we take the break. But, uh, sorry about this. It's, it's embarrassing, I know. But, okay. The holiday for a week for two people. Uh, the question I'm a little embarrassed about, what is the correct abbreviation for the Central Intelligence Agency in America? Is it CIA, KGB, or MI5? And if you don't know, well, uh, you don't deserve to win. The number to ring, 0891 48 49 50. The lines are open till midnight on Sunday. Come back and join us soon. Welcome back. Uh, now we've got the uh, we've got the young lady, the Lord and the MP, and uh, Dominic, Lord Addington. I think it's filthy. Get, no, never mind. Is there You're anything? Jealous, is there right? anything <laughs> three of you can do together? There is. <laughs> there is. Done. Even it's done. Even done. Rugby. Okay, off you go. Little we rugby move. We now have the classic situation that somebody has caught you from behind when you were running up the pitch with a ball right, in your Vic? hand. You okay? Oh, good. Okay. And the young lady has grabbed my legs. I cannot move my legs. I'm about to fall down. So all you have to do is pop the ball backwards, and you have a pass. Yes. yes! Breakthrough and score. Oh! Where else can you get a member of the House of Lords and an MP and a girl together on television? Answer that question. Now, uh, would you welcome a gentleman we found outside? His name is Garth, Gareth. Um, before we, we go on, I'm going to talk to him because it is fascinating. When he first came in today, I said, oh, sword swallowing. It's a bit namby-pamby, isn't it, really? I mean, you know, nobody's interested. Uh, but it's quite... A young lady in the audience, a young lady dressed up like a, a sort of doll. In there, come, 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 come out over here. Before we go any further, what's your name? Karina. Karina, it would be, wouldn't it? Hello, <laughs> this is Karina. Uh, Hello. You think have you ever been with a sword swallower? Um, I'm sorry, have you ever met a sword swallower before? Not in real life, no. No. Okay, would you, Gareth, just because I was amazed when we did this before, just put the sword down before you do your act. The, the, yeah, okay. What? Yeah, whichever one you like, okay. Now, this isn't a trick, is it? No, this is real. That's a real sword. And it really, got, I thought it just shut up, you know, I thought it closed into itself. But the, Baz, you watch this, never mind you can't watch this, it goes right into your gullet. Straight to the bottom of your stomach. Down to about there. Right. Okay, I'm going to ask Karina to pull it out, because when I had to pull it out, I felt really quite queasy. Now, explain, how, how does she do it? Okay, Karina, what happens here is I'm going to take a full bow from the waist, at which point I would like you to grip the hilt with just your left hand. Okay. Stay nice and relaxed. Relax in your wrist. Let's see yeah. where he wants to go. Yeah, just relax your and wrist, And I'll Karina. just pull straight okay. off <laughs> like yes. that. Okay. Now, now, a few things to remember. Yes. Don't want any of this. <laughs> none of this. Oh, definitely not. And none of this. Okay. okay. Otherwise, I might be tempted to. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Does this go? Does this go right into your stomach? Through? Oh yes. It goes into, into the stomach. stomach. Okay. Off we go. Just to demonstrate for us, and then then we'll get on with the uh, the entertainment. Entertainment. Yes. Okay. Fine. Right, right in, and he's not talking, right down the gullet, right in, so it's right down to about here. Very, very good. Now, just very slowly, hold it, don't move it, just let him pull off it. Oh, it's a, well done for Karina. Did you? It's, it's very intimate, isn't it? It's very frightening. It's very intimate. It's almost like being inside another person's body. Thank you very much indeed. Well, We're going to give you a big build up. You sit down. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's something you don't often see on television, a bit of sword swallowing. Please, would you give a big welcome for Gareth!
don't we bring you that? I mean, that is too, uh, really. Uh, I think you have to feel the sword going into the stomach and, uh, and pulling it out. It really, it, you, if you get a chance to do that, you should, you know, feel it. But don't try it at home. Not the sort of thing you should do. Uh, right, here's, a, here's an interesting man. He is the joint editor of the Fortean Times. I don't know whether you're a reader of the Fortean Times. Maybe not, but it's an interesting publication, to say the least. Please, will you welcome Paul Seeking. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Now, the 14 times stage unconvention 95, some time ago in London. That's right. A week Last or so week. ago. Yep. In the world, or is the world getting wackier and weirder? I think it is. We had a minor glitch last year, and it went down 2%, according to our calculations. Oh, did it? Oh, damn. But um, it's well on the way to its promises to be on really? the way up again. Should I think we, towards the millennium it's going to get Should weird. we explain that the 14 times looks at the weird, the unusual? We've got a few photographs in there you could just... Um, you know, or not. Or <laughs> pass it. So, no. You haven't got any photographs? No. Oh, what a shame. Like, tell the highlights show. of the last, last 12 months. Well, you, you've got a top 10 list, haven't That's you? Right. The, the yeah. weirdest things to happen in the world or this, this mm -hmm. country? In the world. Well, in the world mm -hmm. in 1994, please. We had in a place called Dunmara in the outback of Australia. There was thousands of small sort of um, sh well, they shad or some the spotted fish fell down in rain, and really? it was the sixth time in, in a third time in six six years that it happened there. And this was three hundred miles from the sea. So and nobody knows why. No, um, it wasn't. There wasn't an associated whirlwind, which is often the mm. accepted explanation. So they could have come from another planet, or sort of a passing UFO that just dropped out some of their. Um Hard to say, thought, really. Isn't it, really? Um, all thought. sorts of things fall down yeah. from the sky, and we Do keep they? an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Another good Australian story was these um, strange lines that a satellite, um, infrared satellite, picked up. These lines that were 250 miles long in the in Nullarbor, in the um, desert there in the uh -huh. south, and they were nine miles wide and about 50 miles across, uh, apart, parallel lines. Couldn't work out why. It looks to us like the barcode of the planet. It's, it just looks like. Really. It's about the right size. Yes. Yes. They can't work out what it was. Enough. Thank you. Don't take the mick. <laughs> and nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows what it is. No, no, yeah. they haven't a clue. Okay, no. those are two. Right, go two. on. Let's have, let's have some more. Um, I had something called the um, Toronto Blessing, which we, I like very much. It was a religious revival. It started in a church near the airport in Toronto in January and um, spread rapidly around the world. And um, what made it so unusual was that. Um, people would um, laugh uncontrollably. They'd sort of fall down in the aisles and <laughs> couldn't stop laughing and <laughs> laughing for Jesus. <laughs> and so this I like spread, that. this is caught on, yes? I it see. started yes. in Brom Brompton in London and spread That's all around the country. There were 1,500 really? churches. By no. the end of the year, there were 1,500 churches in uh, infected this, with this. This is the sort of thing that you, you put into the 14 times, just, uh, you know, the weird, the wonderful, the only... I always That's remember right. reading it and finding that poor bloke, and there's a photograph of him who, who had an amorous uh, inclination with a chicken that's right. Do you it's your favourite story. It's, uh, well, I can't believe it, but you tell me it's true. I think yeah. you, you probably made it up. Oh, we didn't make it up. No, we never make anything up, but um, we, we, we don't guarantee that it's true because somebody thinks it's true. And, um... Excuse me just a minute. Jerry, we're doing a programme over <laughs> here. Sorry. If you want to have a personal conversation with the I'm audience... I'm trying to keep them in, in order. They're fine. <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> Thank you. All right, anyway, sorry about that. So, I mean, this, no. guy, this guy had gone down a rock face to actually... To actually make he wanted uh, love some to a chicken. Quiet moments with his his girlfriend who happened to be a chicken. Yeah. And uh, he dislodged a rock which fell on his back and um, and killed him. Very dra dramatic photograph. And you um, had the photograph of this man mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of, of of intercourse with a chicken stuck under a rock. Well, that's what they they told us. It was it's published in the Spanish press, and uh, uh, we loved yeah, it. Yeah, I, I see, I see. Um, you report some pretty ridiculous stuff in there as well. I mean, do you ever yeah. check any? Mm. What's the most apart from that? What's the most ridiculous thing when you've been there? You thought, oh my god, I can't believe I put that in. Um, after twenty years, you get a kind of feel for these things <laughs> that, that um, you think that's a bit, you know, a bit weird. There's a um, couple of Siamese twins. Who, one of them committed a murder, supposedly in Paraguay, and so they were sent up before the firing squad, and the other one <laughs> complained bitterly, I'm innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a bit silly. You know. I thought, I don't believe this one, you know. That so is so sick. I mean, it is <laughs> sick. It's... What sort of... Well, I mean, it's not a widely read magazine, is it? Oh, it is now, yeah, more oh, and more. Is it really? Mm, yes. Yeah. Well, probably because I keep talking to you, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> How many do you sell? We sell um, up nearly 40,000 now. Really? Mm. Yes, you put a couple of uh, nude uh, pictures in there, you probably boost it up even more. <laughs> 40,000 is not yeah. a great deal, is it? I mean, it's, it's No, no, but um, <laughs> we, when 
about four years ago, we were selling about 3,000, so <laughs> it's, it's not too bad. Oh, wait, it's, no, 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 it's, yeah. and it, it keeps you in uh, a custom to which you were, exactly. What do you think we could look forward to at the uh, millennium? They say it's going to be a, a, a time of great change and difference, have you? Well, we got a lot, of, every few months we get one of these really balmy cults. I mean, we started early this year with these Aum people in, in Japan. Um, it usually happens about the end of the year, end of 92, we had the mad people in Korea saying the world's about to end. End of 93, they were in the White Brotherhood in the Ukraine, and then we had the Waco business, and then the... I'd like to do so that on the... I'd like to, I'd like to stage that live television program for the day the, the world is apparently going to end, and sit there and interview all the people, and then see what happens if it doesn't. I mean, if it does, who cares? But if it doesn't, they're going to be really embarrassed, aren't they? Indeed, yes. It's, I always like to see what kind of excuses they make. You know, when the, oh, well, um, <laughs> our calculations were wrong. No, it's, uh, it's really we have another five years. No, no. Do you enjoy this job? Oh, yes. It's tremendous. You do. Yeah. And, and mm. can anybody send in something for you? Or something? Yeah, the more right, ridiculous, yes. the better? No, well, we always try. We, we have a serious purpose, although obviously it's, a lot of it's very funny. We, we do try and check out things best we can. Mm. And um, if we're lucky, we have somebody who can, we can actually send and go along and talk to the witness of the strange blob that fell on his picnic table or whatever it might have been you know <laughs> paul thank you very much indeed if you have a weird experience get in touch with paul steve king thank you yeah. okay right thank you control yourselves please no hysterical laughing at this enjoy this talent at its most prophetic is that a good word? Yes, I think that's okay. Uh, we, as I, I say every week, we scour this country and other countries to bring you the best in entertainment. We've already had sword swallowing on the programme tonight. Now, please, would you welcome a gentleman who has come out to entertain you tonight on the accordion, Mr. Billy Moore! Yeah! A girl and boy were happy for the wedding they had planned. They sent the invitations out to everyone they knew, hoping that they overcome and fill up every pill. We all love we all hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea. We all love we all hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea. Eventually the day arrived, the excitement was so great. Gretel's not outside the church cause hands was rather late Then suddenly along the road the silence was disturbed The hands were singing a little song, this is what they heard We all love we all hold on to the tea Hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea We all love we all hold on to the tea Hold on to the tea, hold on to the tea Gretel was delighted to see hands were safe and sound They both went to the altar while they Stood around. The parson then took up his book, the bells began to ring. As he pronounced a man and wife, the choir began to sing. We all love we all, oh, we all love it, oh, we love it, oh, we love it. We all love we all, oh, we love it, oh, we love it, oh, it. Now they have got a family, a little girl and boy. And they have started jodeling to father's pride and joy. So if you go to Switzerland one sunny day in spring, and then the family will be there and they will sweetly sing. We all love we all hope for the Lord it Oh, for the Lord it Oh, for the Lord it We all love we all hope for the Lord it Oh, for the Lord it Oh, it We all we all we all we all for the Lord it was delightful thank you paul you were stunned into silence is that something that maybe will find itself into the 14 times you never know it might fit our cultural slot very well it might it yeah. might thank you billy thank you uh, gary 
Yeah, I'm ready. It's over to you. <sighs> oh, write me short letters. <laughs> oh, you need... OK, OK, he's over here. All right? OK. Yeah. Sorry, Peter's directing. Look, so he's uh, come on. Yeah, you In four there, minutes, I'll try and do four letters. OK, You've right. written me 15 pages. OK. Can, your can, life story ending with... Hold on, hold try on. Try and get him... No, hang on. It's all right. Hold okay. on, hold on. Yeah, we've we just oh. got to get him because he's not well. Oh. OK. Thank you for bothering to read it. I, I don't want him to drop dead. <laughs> uh, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you somebody wants to know, is it an offence to refuse somebody a job because they come from Yorkshire? Probably. The answer is, I'm afraid to say no. He also what says... What do you mean you're afraid he, to say no? You, it's not an offence. He says he can't get money from the government because he's moved from Yorkshire to Kent. I think he's balmy. Of course you can. They give it to everybody. £27 a week. Hold on. Oh. Oh, yes. Somebody wrote me a letter here. They want to know, oxygen. is it possible to yeah. get we a got lawyer any oxygen who can instruct a doctor no, it's who have to is be mouth prepared to, mouth. to give evidence <laughs> against another doctor? The answer is every solicitor who handles <laughs> medical negligence actions is too delighted to do it. You sign yourself the saint, get yourself a decent solicitor. There are uh, thousands of them out there. What? Jerry Hayes knows a yeah, few. I've got, I've got one here. It comes from somebody from, oh. yes, from Somerset. And it says, would you please ask your legal eagle's opinion on my being charged £670 on a £6 overdraft? Well, the thing is, I know... How can you do I that? I actually know... What, what happens is, you see, the banks think they can simply put charges on for every letter that they send, and they have a charge for every month for which you're overdrawn and so on and so forth. But... There is a general duty in English law to mitigate losses, and it applies to everybody, including banks. And if a bank is owed six quid, the way to mitigate their loss is to write it off or sue for six quid. But what do they do? They usurp the function of the courts by quite simply putting that on all of us, knowing that any of us who are frightened of them will pay up. Yeah. I think that's outrageous, yeah. and I, I know many yeah. people who've suffered that way. Okay. Okay. Now, I think just banks should be banned right. from doing All right, that. take a deep breath. Sit back. I'm a bit worried about him, Baz. Are you worried about him? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I'm ready Very for more good. dancing. Now, let's go. More dancing, more more dancing, dancing in a minute. All right. Yes, yes, Keep an eye on him. Pauline what? has a question for you of yes. our MP for Harlow. What, that's Jerry Hayes? Yes. yes. I'd like to know whether his hair is real. You'd like to know whether his hair is real. So, well, come down. It's honestly... Pull come it, on, pull, pull it, it, pull, pull it. his hair. Is it real? Yeah, now, come on, have another feel. Real? Anybody, go on, have a real pull. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 here's an MP. What would you like to do with a Tory MP? <laughs> <laughs> and while she's thinking what she'd like to do with a Tory MP, we'll take the break, shall we? OK, competition first of all. What is the correct abbreviation for the Central Intelligence Agency? Is it the CIA, the uh, GKG, KGB, or the MI5? I don't know what I'm talking about. Ring us! The holiday could be yours. 0891 48 49 50. The lines are open till midnight on Sunday. Come back. We have got the Brenders again. <laughs> Over here, over here, just before we uh, get into this, don't forget the competition. Uh, what are the uh, what are the uh, flash it up on the screen? I can't remember. Uh, what? Yeah. What? What? What is the CIA? Uh, what is it? What is the American uh, intelligence investigation? Uh, what is? What is it? CIA, KGB, or MI5? What does it stand for? Blah blah blah, etc. 0891 48 49 50. The lines are open till midnight on uh, Sunday and ring us now. Fine. Good. Okay. Um, <coughs> There's a lot going on in the back row. What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing now? No. Yes, you can't behave yourselves, can you? Can't they, do, what happens? You take them out, they just can't behave themselves, can they? Them Why do I they behave know. like that? They was let out today, so... Yeah. Were they? Well, just, I'll get my eye on you. Just watch how you're going on, all right? OK? Uh, so two down here who said, don't normal-looking people ever get spoken to on television? 
Yeah, that's what I said. Normal? Yeah, because she was talking, the lady with the short skirts and yes. that. So yes, yes. So we were thinking just ordinary <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah, okay, yeah. right. Because we ain't got nothing short, we thought you were Well, okay, next time, come when, when you've got something short, for goodness sake. Yes, yeah. I will. He's not got a short skirt on? No. Okay, right. We are, we're privileged today to have, of course, Lord Addington with us, the front bench spokesman for the Liberal Democrats on uh, disability and sport. And because he's a, a, a very keen rugby player, imagine this man in his ermine cloak going into the House of Lords. He is in the House of Lords. Uh, he's got some of our uh, regular friends here. We're going through a few rugby moves because, of course, you know, rugby league, in fact, could change quite dramatically, couldn't it? Well, it could do, but you unfortunately, know? we're here playing rugby union. This is one of the things Does it make any difference at do. all? Yes, you oh, see. Oh, right, OK, fine. Uh, so we won't talk about that. <laughs> well, you... that's as well, then. Yeah. Yes, OK, Dominic. Now, you're, you're going to show us something interesting. Why do we have a Tory MP lying on the floor? Why not? <laughs> well, they normally, they lie. They they normally lie in the house, don't they? Oh, oh there we are. Gentlemen, we have started a ruck here because Jerry has gone to the floor after a tackle. He was tackled to the floor. He was tackled to the floor or has gone to the floor to drive the ball. Okay. So he has the ball there. You do we have, have the, the opposition. Lean on the ball, because you've got to hold the ball. You don't want to let it go, does he? Right. And what we are doing is now we are now going to contest possession of the ball. What does Cookie two. do, by the way? Yes. Cookie. Yes. Well, she, behind you. that is my scrum half. Yes. That is going to follow me into situation. <laughs> <laughs> and the Scrum's London Scottish jersey has never looked better. <laughs> That's why I left them. They didn't look that good when I was playing for them. OK, But on. I'll be going there and yes. contest possession. Right. I'll hit my cookie uh, getting there. Push uh, them back. Uh, yes. Oh, you get the ball. That's it. That's it. Oh, you're such a tough That's lord. That's it. Oh, oh well, doesn't he get... Yeah. Turn around right towards the camera. Turn around right. towards the camera. It's a bit rougher when it's okay. really going on. OK, if this was happening properly, when we get yes. over here... Yeah. You'd be over there, Steve. Right. Wait, yeah, we've got no chance. with these two men, and if he's not... And he's still hanging on to the ball. Can we have the ball back for a Ball back, put the ball back. Yes, OK. Yeah. Right. He's still hanging on to the ball. Yeah. I go in there and win it back with my foot. Wow. OK, fine. Right. Oh. And possibly, if I had to, I'm allowed to, I'm the laws, walk over him, because he's a... Go on, then. OK. Walk on him. Yes. <laughs> Once, very quickly, Dominic, put the ball down very quickly in real toes. In, 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 um, That's the end of the world. In, in real time. In real time. In real time. In real time. Here we go. In real time. Go. Okay. Oh. Uh, enough, got boys. Boys. Okay. Please. Enough. 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 Baz. I'm, so, I'm sorry, let, I'm sorry, come over here. I'm so, you know, when you have them, you let them out, playtime just gets carried. I'm sorry about that. I am sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, welcome singing Blow to Your Head, the Brenders! Look up. 
Control yourself. Woo! Goodness sake! I, I know you have. A, I know you have a large extended family, but fancy bringing them all to the show tonight. Thank you very much indeed. The Brenders and blown away or blown blow to your head. It's called actually blow. What? An interesting voice. It's something a, yes. something yes. interesting in that voice. Yes. I thought they were going to elaborate on that. No, I just oh, like I it. Right, there's fine. Some, there's yeah, yeah, yes. I kind of yes. like. You do through. like emotion, don't you? Because you get very sort of emotional. No, it's just something coming through yeah. in the voice, which is yeah. nice. Anyway, okay. Baz thinks you've got something coming through in the voice, Shut Brenda. Up. So that's no, that, no, that, that's, <laughs> that's good, right. I'm, I'm glad about that too. Uh, right. Before we carry on, Jupiter Joy. Oh, excitement! Oh, so, you know that we yeah, have on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get a chance, if you're near Manchester University, they're going to be there on the fifth of May. And I said I'd give them a mention, and that's very nice too. Uh, who sent in this, Simon? Mrs. Isaacs. Mrs. Isaacs. Oh, yes, oh, it is. Please mention and return this photo. Mrs. Isaacs has sent it to us. It's a photograph of her dog. Oh, that's nice. No, oh, that's, how cute. That, that how is sweet. nice. That is very nice. I hate dogs, but that's a nice and, dog. And uh, here, this comes from Jane from Chester, who said, uh, if it takes a photo of my bum to get you to mention me on the programme, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I think she the week. What? No, no. no. And, and, oh, and, and right, She sent right, me a postcard. No. And, uh, this is I, her. How can we... Uh, we can't. We can't. Send anyway, bigger anyway. photographs and more of it. And <laughs> Gaz, one of our artists here tonight... This uh, just get... You know, I never have time. We'll run out of time. This is a photograph here. He did this in... Where did he do this? In Harleston. In, in, in Harleston. Harleston. I keep thinking of, uh, of, of Eamon every time you speak. Anyway, uh, and this is the first ever floor mural, um, yeah, pavement mural. I think so, as far as I know. In this country. Yeah. And this is public art that they're doing. You're, it's the you're, first you're, permanent one. It's, it's a painted, permanent. Um, with uh, mineral paints that soak into the substrate of the concrete. Yeah. Well, I think that's very nice, don't you? I think we should have a few more. Okie dokie. Here's Baz. Yeah. And, and here's Baz on the whale cam tonight. Hi, James. I like the whale cam. Let's have a Good shot news. A great British, a great oh. British movie. I any... Yes, you have. There we are. I've turned it on. What? Got me? That is good. Isn't that good? For an ordinary... Vi look, it's as good... As... Oh, sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. It is just, you know, <laughs> look. This is me just doing this. It's wonderful. Bit, I mean, I can even do bit this. jerky, James. I can do... I oh, know. I can do myself. I, could, I was going to shoot myself. You see? Look at that close up there. There we are. That's, that's good, isn't it? OK, let's carry on. Right. A great British that. movie. Yes. This, is, this is a film by, directed by Angela Pope called Captives. Captives. It stars Tim Roth, who is you the... You like him? Yeah, he's you the guy, like he's him, the guy Quentin Tarantino has yeah. used in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, two great movies. And an up-and-coming actress called Julia Ormond. In fact, in America, Miss Ormond, who is British, is being hailed as a big new international superstar. Big. That's yet to be proven. Yet to be proven. However, oh, in right. captives, she is incandescent. Shall we see a little bit from the film? Let's see. It. Here we are. Can you move the thing? Invite. 
Mein Dorn. Bald. Don't you hate it when that happens? That Don't you hate it when that happens? And it reminds me, this, I'm due for a six-month checkup. It, this is an electrifying movie, James. It's serious, it's intense, it's thrilling, it's brilliantly shot. Tim Roth was complaining that, you know, the one thing the British are good at is making terrible movies. He was wrong here. This is a good film. That was Let, very horny. This, that was really be that as it may, this, this is set in a prison. She is a dentist who visits twice a week. They fall in love. Halfway through the film, you think, God, who's using who here? But the sort of the ending is sensational. Got to see it. Miss Ormond also appears in the second movie opening this week called Legend of the Falls, stars Brad Pitt. This film anoints Brad Pitt as a bona fide mega superstar. He's way ahead of Tom Cruise. Brad Pitt is going to be a big star for the next 20, you know, 30 years. You Seriously. critics are so fickle. I mean, one moment Tom Cruise could do no wrong. Now he's old, ancient, and out the no, window. And there's, Brad some, there's, some, there's something here. fascinating about Pitt. He's sort of a throwback to the Carrie Cooper mix with Paul Newman, and uh -oh. he's he's he's, an, he's, he's going to be an icon. He is. It's a good film. Yeah. Legends of the Falls. You know, immensely enjoyable nonsense. Because last week you weren't happy. Seeing. No, I'm happy this week. You're happy this week. I'm happy this week. Okay, good, fine. Good movies. Yeah, make okay. me happy. Okay, right. Let's get out there, and uh, his lordship's going to finish off the program tonight with a bit of a scrum. We need a few people, I think, on the uh, on the floor, if that's okay. All right, Baz. Yeah. Okay, because you, you know, I think this is very good. Uh, Lord Addington, uh, can we get a few people down here? Just a, come on, come on, quick, 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 quick. We've only got a few minutes. Uh, uh, you tell them what you want to do. Right, I want six yep. people here. Please. Six people. Okay, Mrs. Six Cleaner. People, none have with that. brooms. None with brooms. Okay. Right now, yeah. can we have three of you to stand round? This, there? by the way, this quick shot of this, this, this jersey. This is the House of Commons charity thing, and that one's at Roslyn Park, and that's, that's where Roslyn he Park. Carry on. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right no, now. No yeah. we, what we've actually got here is I need the six. There yeah. We are. Come on, get in there. Oh, right sorry, now. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. This is much more fun, but it's. Not actually what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> you get a camera in there. This Can you is, uh, find? This is the incorrect bind, but it is interesting. Now, what actually we are supposed to be doing, which isn't going to happen here. <laughs> we'll see you same time next week. Have a nice weekend. This is a fun time. OK, go on, into it. Come on, come on. Get into it. Right now, go on.